Hello dear viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Camera Tuesday, we're going to talk about focus puller or first AC. So let's dive deep into it. So what exactly is the problem? Well, reality is cinema camera when they started, they used film reels. Now problem with that is there is no technology to allow you to basically autofocus a film reel camera. It's literally was not designed in that way. Like you may think like we had film SLR, but film SLR works on the fact that there is a mirror. Mirror has a small translucent section and that reflects onto the sensor. Now it's inherently designed to work on uh, basically still shots. Katang, katang, of course, many times a second, but best you could have ever achieved was like five to 10 uh, you know, shots per second. Movie starts at 24. So that's a thing that's not gonna work. So, uh, and be mindful, there is no shutter in case of like a movie film camera, there is no shutter. What is, there is a disc that is spinning. Now, in that disc, there is half part that is blacked out. Other, uh, basically, half part is open, which allows you to expose. Other half part is mirror. That mirror is the thing that you see people looking at. That's what they are looking at. They're looking at that mirror. So that is spinning. So autofocus video while you are moving film 24 seconds, uh, 24 times a second. Yeah, really not viable and that's why they started to use old school tactics of lens calibration basically lens had markings and they knew where exactly the film plane is so they're like okay this is a film plane it's eight meters away nine meters away and generally used really very uh you know sharp apertures as in like f4 f8 things of that nature there was no method for autofocus and digital cinema and you're like well that problem should be solved now we have digital camera well not really simply because the top grade cinema camera i'm not talking about tv show camera or news gathering camera or documentary camera i'm talking about like top grade like this camera was only built for cinema generally does not even have the ability to autofocus the reason for that is whenever you're looking about autofocus in video it requires sensor to have something for example like in my canon dsl sensor has what you call dual pixel autofocus there is a whole silicon there that is embedded in the main silicon just to make sure that autofocus works same goes with a uh, sony mirrorless same goes with nikon mirrorless so when they were making a silicon they have to compromise some amount of quality um, optical quality in terms of get autofocus now that's a very minute thing nowadays but still it's something that you are sacrificing when you are building video camera that is made for cinema use it's just like dude that shall not compromised with uh, optical quality that's the whole point no compromises so fundamentally they don't even have the ability to uh, you know autofocus be it red be it re they don't even have the ability so that's one thing so either you use film or you use a basically digital system you are still stuck with a system that has no autofocus and in big screen when you're talking about a big ass screen as in like hundreds of inches uh, that creates a paradox where it's like any minute mistake becomes huge everybody will pay attention to it and it's all again the same thing like uh, how you have salt in your dishes if the salt is perfect nobody will notice it if salt is a bit less or a bit more people will be like hey dude something else the focus is exactly like if it's right you do not even think about it almost like sound you don't think about it if it's working perfectly if it's off everybody's like e so big display makes it uh, very, very brutal. And another thing why this job is becoming exponentially more difficult is because modern lenses are bright and sharp. What does this bright mean? Bright means our aperture goes up to bonkers level, which was unimaginable. As in like, it's not that it could not have been built or has not been used, but it was like a rare spell, uh, specialty case. It was not a common practice where it's like every shot is like F1.8. It was not a common practice, like flat out, God help you if you actually tried to do that. Nowadays, that's common. Like if you look at the some scenes that are in movie Joker, holy damn, there's like shallow depth of field. I have never seen like a movie that has that much shallow depth of field in that much of the scenes. And again, modern lenses are so bright, like F1.8, F1.2, uh, it's like just a thing now. So that creates a very serious issue where it's like razor thin uh, depth of field. And that depth of field is so tiny that it's like, either on top of you or your eyelids. Like that's how sharp it has become. And sharpness, be mindful. This is one common misconception people have that uh, if they don't understand film, it's like, hey, the old films were in HD. No, you hope they were in HD if the lenses used to shoot them were good. So if you have uh, basically half of 35 millimeter, because when you are talking about film camera, it's like the same 35 millimeter is just instead of going vertical it's going horizontal instead of going horizontal it's going vertical so if the frame size is smaller now that has some amount of resolving power that's awesome that's not an issue problem is lenses were not that good so if you have 1970s movie that was shot in film and you're like hey i have the film so it's 4k up scalable no all you're gonna see is noise because the lens itself could not resolve it 
like we it took us hundreds of years of engineering to reach a point where we have modern optics and modern optics is crazy sharp simply because of digital files once we had digital files we started to do what we call uh, you know pinch uh, zoom pinching 100% zoom pinching uh, like doing this and all that so that created a feedback loop where it's like more and more sharpness so right now modern lenses that are being built it's bonkers how sharp they are so they amplify everything like for example this was a movie james bond and you can see that like it looks so sharp imagine looking at this in a, like you know large theater it will literally look like the glass is cutting you that's how sharp these things are so focused must be pulled very precisely and here's the deal this is half art half science so what does that mean that simply means it requires love and intent can you autofocus using uh, basically let's say bit lower grade cameras that have autofocus sensors built into it absolutely you can have sony series cameras that can do that quite well and even some canon cameras quite well but problem is that it does not have intent or love to it for example you the example is like bam i'm focused on it what bam i'm focused on that that's not how it's supposed to be done like every time you see focus it has a intent to it like we are trying to add that we have trying to add motion and all that but here's the when a person is in charge of that it's inherent it's inherent like i'm slowly pulling it over. like there is an intent to it like you look at this thing you say oh, james won't have a worried face then it's like what he's worried about bam you instantly figure it out that's the whole point so it allows the viewers gaze to move through the story if you are doing it right you can tell in the same frame you can tell multiple elements of the story in one go just by using pull focus or rack focus so for that reason you really need to have what we call love and intent like it cannot be just like wham bam bam like we can do that right, right now with modern uh, sensor technology that's easy that's like chump change for modern sensors to do but it does not have that love or intent so that's the problem that's why we need have a dude or a dudet taking care of it so that's the first ac so first assistant camera now be mindful digital cameras have so much hassle added to it and be mindful modern lenses are so idiotically complicated that there has to be just one person who is just like my job is just to make sure that thing is focused nothing else than that like that's my job of course uh, that means by definition the person is responsible for the whole camera kit so which lens is used i am deciding that which camera is used i am deciding it and like which nd filter is going to be i am deciding it what aperture to be used of course director of uh, photography will give me a guidelines it's like you know we want this to be shallow but this is action scene so we do want, don't want to be like there will be guidelines coming to this individual and this individual would be like okay i'm going to decide what happens so is the one who's responsible for it and basically simplify in this way what goes into the camera sensor who is responsible for that that person is first ac that's why it has the first name into it and they have to deal with the tech and art part and they also need a dp that is not going to interfere too much many times dp could ask just like they just looked at like you know large format camera with super wide apertures so they're like wow this is awesome and uh, focus puller would be like sir it's not suited for what you want to do and again nobody can pull focus like let's say you want like i'm like in handheld everything is moving the person is running and i'm then going to use shallow level of field is like no sir no bring it down like of course don't bring it down to f4 like but at least try to bring it down to f2.8 so it's one of those things they need something that allows the crew to work together because of the importance and the stress of this person because we might put you can have the best scene ever best lighting actor best emotional shot ever but if it's out of focus it's use and throw you just eat the footage it's one of those things there is no post processing fixing in this it's like out of focus equals out of focus nothing can be done like nope it's just a nope territory and uh, movies that were shot in like you know 60s 70s and 80s you will always find that they do not have that super wide uh, you know super shallow depth of field generally it was not preferred because again people will make a mistake so that mistake will cost a lot of real so like nope and be mindful that super shallow depth of field amplified many of the aberrations of the lens so they're like not even preferred that much so this is the job of the first ac the person who is responsible for that there is one dude the dude is basically first ac so what are the tool set what are the tools that are made for this ecosystem well they need what we call cinema glass now what is the difference between cinema glass and uh, photographic glass well photograph in terms of physical glass same control c control v does not make any difference heck there are many retro lenses many nikkor old lenses and some current manufacturing lenses people love that lens they love the rendition they love the out of field they just love it but they hate it to use it in cinema camera they're like okay i'm going to take the lens eat the casing out of it remove the glass put the glass into a cinema casing and sell it again with a markup and yes they are doing it it's a thing so the glass is not different what is different is there should not be no drive by wire 
rational would say no to drive by wire what does drive by wire means meaning you are rotating something is sending a signal through encoder that encoder is telling the processor what to do the processor is moving the lens so it's not reliable and by, uh, this was the one of the issues that micro four third camera had such a bad reputation in early days it's like uh, the autofocus algorithm was not good enough where people will just close their eyes and rely on it and because they were using drive by wire it does make your lens cheaper not cheaper i would say it's just like fancier i would say uh, it does have some benefits but consequences if you turn it slowly it only focuses from let's say here to here if you slow same amount like 170 day exact same amount you know it you do it fast it had acceleration data somebody added acceleration data into that readout it was like why so that's just no go you come up with a cinema shoot with that kind of lens they are like there's the door disappear so one thing no drive by wire it has to be mechanically coupled you are moving the ring it's moving the lens, the end. There is nothing more than that. It has to be uh, basically direct physical drive and it has to have large travel. This is the primary design difference between cinema lenses and uh, basically movie lenses. And this is why like the optics have to be designed in such a way. So if they are designing from day one, like, okay, this will be a cinema package lens. They will design the glasses so it has a lot of range. So the travel distance could be amplified. So in basically, photography scene because you need speed everything is designed to be in 90 degrees like close far close far when you're talking about cinema it's like almost 270 or sometimes almost 360 they're like so it gives you range now like do you really need that level of precision well think in this way you have a shallow depth of field you have a large format uh, digital camera what kind of large format 65 millimeter from re alexa huge freaking huge in those sort of scenes, if you are capturing someone who is just talking, let's say Robert Downey Jr. is in sitting there and just talking, he will be moving like this. Like that, of course, he has lungs, he breathes air, I think. And due uh, to that, his physical body will have a physical motion. That will look up, like you can literally have his focus going from nose to eye, nose to eye. Now, of course, it can be design intent, but you have to have that. And you cannot achieve that if your lens itself does not have that kind of travel dexterity, so to say. If the lens is like, Hoo -hoo, it's, like it's, it's not going to be practical. But these lenses, that's why the cinema lenses are inherently designed that way. That's like, take your time, travel. They are not designed for fast, they are designed for precise. They're like, I'm going to cut that lens exactly where you want to be. That's why they have huge travel distances. And they need a willing film crew. You can have better tools nowadays, no discussion about that. Like back in the days, everybody was like going like this. Now we have wireless solutions and all that jazz. Which is ironic, they literally fight it against a you know, drive-by-wire system, but modern uh, focus puller is just drive-by-wire. So it could have been, I could see an alternate world where companies did not add acceleration data to encoders. They're like, hey, use this Panasonic camera and just use this app to pull focus. It could have worked. I could easily see that it would have worked, but the comp the, I really need to fire that person who figured out, let's add acceleration data to it. It's like, no. No. So they do need a film crew that works with them because they are the one who is like who is responsible for what goes into the sensor, be it film or whatever have you. It is critically important that their word has to be final word. If they say, hey, bro, F2.8 is not working, we have to drop it down to F3, you have to do F3. There is no discussion. Now, yes, it is true that they do no longer talk in F, they talk in T, which is transmission because here's the deal. If you have a lens that is F2.8, which is geometrical, uh, F is geometrical value, F2.8, and uh, it has, let's say, 24 glass elements, it has a lower transmission versus F2.8, which has, let's say, only 11 lens element. It will be far brighter. Again, assuming same glass chemistry is used. So for that reason, to make sure multiple lenses can be used reliably, they always have T stops. What is the transmission value of it, which is very difficult to find. DxO Mark used to do that for us in Himalayan, but they went bankrupt. So nowadays, it's very hard for us to find out what is exactly the T stop of a lens. So they need uh, basically authority. That's why the first is there. Like if they say, hey, drop it down, you drop it down. If they say, remove this thing, it's making it difficult. You have to do it. Like they need a film crew that works with them. Then we come to the art part, like here's deal, this is a TV show and I'm pretty sure that's a TV show and keeping things in focus, if you're thinking that's your job, like let's say you got this job for some reason, let's say a small startup or something like that, you got this job, everybody gets generally in commercial, that's how they start, they're like, oh, that's my job, eh, no, that's half of your job, it's like getting things in focus, that's the easy part, heck, we have a machine that can do that. That's the easy part. It's just that how you rack, quote unquote, that's the part that carries the emotion. And that's the art part. Science, how sharp it is. Art, how you get there. 
Be mindful, we are talking about video, we are not talking about photo. You do not have snapshot images like, I have I snapped it? Is it perfectly sharp? That's not the point. Point is, how do you carry the person there? Basically, the emotional uh, of the audience, you need to carry it there. For example, if you look at someone that is done very cheaply, you will like, okay, tip of the gun to the person face, bam, it's like, bam, super sharp. Look at the, something that has a bit more love, a bit more effort put into it. That's like every pull focus would be like, that's how, like you can almost feel it as it's like this. Now here's the deal. Unless you are looking for it, you will not notice it. And that's the art of it. So if I show you something like this, it never registers. If I show like this, that very scene, that very scene, like you can have a person, a person could have a boom boom device, that boom boom device is coming in focus. If that is done over, let's say three seconds versus something is done in one third of a second, even though you have the same actions, whereas like here to here, it will carry completely different meaning, completely different. You will be shocked. And I can guarantee you any of the movie that you watch and you really, really like the visual quality of it. It's like it just feels the emotion. You feel it. I can get it. Pay attention now. Or rewatch that movie. Pay attention to it. It's like, holy damn, they put so much effort into focus. And that's why I specified it. It's half art. Do not focus. Oh, I need this lens only. Then I can. No, no, you can do that. That's the easy part. Getting things in focus. That's the easy part. How do you bring that emotion there? Like, you know, everything, everything requires that emotional control. Without that emotional control, it just flat it looks like a digital camera so speed in rhythm that's the key that's what you're getting paid for that's the difference between somebody getting paid for bare minimum versus somebody who's like who's like pre-booked sir you are pre-booked for like five years from now so that's the difference speed and rhythm and it's a very high stress job be mindful you think other jobs are high stress in uh, cinema industry this job is like Haha, hold my beer so it's fundamentally very high stress job and it's one of those things we do not talk too much about it but Damn. Like I really do not envy the person who was job was like pull focus on freaking walking Phoenix going YOLO and in super large format camera. Nope. No, sir. I do not want to be near that. It's like, no, just no. So this was my presentation on focus cooler or first AC. Hopefully you have liked it, learn from it. In that case, please hit the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike. Press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.